Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the Aftershock Apex 15R. Now I've already done a review of the Aftershock Forge 15 and I'm gonna do a review of the Aftershock Vapor R uh, very soon. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Now, if you're wondering what is the difference between an X and an R variant, the X variant basically has an Intel chip and the R variant, which is actually my favorite, has the critically acclaimed Ryzen 9 5900HX mobile processor. So yes, just like the Forge 15X, you will have a base and a recommended spec. So the one I have here isn't just the recommended spec, it's the recommended spec with the upgraded GPU. So this one, so the recommended spec has an RTX 3070. This one has the RTX 3080, but you also get 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage. Now for the display, this is a 15 inch IPS LCD panel. Uh, it has a refresh rate of 165 Hertz. It does not have any compatibility for G-Sync or FreeSync, unfortunately. Um, we'll speak more about the gameplay later, but this isn't just for gaming, all right? Now, like I mentioned, it's got that Ryzen 9 8 core CPU. This also has an RGB color gamut coverage of 95%. So this is definitely an option for people who want to do color sensitive work as well. Now this has a whopping 91.24 watt hour battery, all right, which is massive, uh, which is just below like the airline limit of like 100 uh, watt hours. But despite the massive battery, I got about, I think six to close to seven hours of regular use on the laptop, uh, which is not bad actually for a gaming laptop. Uh, however, I would still not recommend gaming on it while on battery. Now in terms of IO on the left, you get a single USB type A. Uh, well, it's a USB type A 3.2 gen two. You also get dedicated 3.5 millimeter ports for your mic and your headphones. Over on the right, you get two USB 3.2, although this time they are Gen 1. Uh, you also get the full-size uh, SD card slot, which is really, really appreciated. And over on the back, you get your charging port. You get one of those collapsible LAN ports. Uh, you get a HDMI 2.1, which is really cool. And you also get a Type-C port, which also supports DisplayPort. All right, next, and the laptop speakers are, well, laptop speakers. So if you're like me and you're fussy about your audio, invest in a good pair of headphones or maybe even computer speakers. Now, of course, you get Windows 10 included, but what I really like is that Aftershock actually gives you a couple of very important apps to help get full use out of this laptop. Now, first of all, you get an app weirdly named Dragon. Not sure why it's called that, um, but basically it really helps you prioritize the laptop's resources according to what you want to do. The other app is, well, very aptly called the Control Center. So in that app, you get a full range of different features. You can control the fan, you can control your performance. You can even control the RGB on this laptop. We'll speak more about the RGB in a bit. All right, now in terms of design, well, what can I say? It is kind of plain looking, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. Uh, I think the only gamery aspect of it is basically the exhaust vents where the fans are. Uh, other than that, it looks kind of plain. Again, I don't mean that in a negative sense. I think it has a design that sort of appeals to anybody, whether you're a gamer or whether you do color sensitive work, 3D modeling, because yes, this is a really good option for that as well. So yeah, if I were to summarize uh, the overall design of the laptop, I would consider it function over form. Uh, it's not the most gaming looking laptop, but it is solidly well built. It's a full aluminum alloy body. It's not one of your plasticky uh, bodies. Everything is really sturdy. Even the screen as well, the bezels are actually quite thin, but yeah, overall really solid. And it's not one of your budget laptops, right? This is a very good and basically a desktop replacement laptop. Now, next up the trackpad, um, it's an okay size. I, I think it's a little small to what I, I would actually like. However, I think they've made a good use of it. It's pretty much taken up the whole bottom part of it. I, I don't think it can get any bigger, but in terms of function, it definitely does the job. It's pretty smooth. Uh, the keyboard, I think, is probably the only thing about this laptop that I don't really like. Now, actually, this is, uh, according to what Aftershock says, is actually a mechanical keyboard, right? But obviously not the same as your desktop mechanical keyboards. Uh, it's a mechanical keyboard designed on a laptop. Now, one thing I will say though, it has a very nice travel distance. It's got a good actuation point as well. Uh, my issue is, you know, if you were to press it along the edges and you don't really have to go all the way to the edge, just a bit off center, 
your keystroke actually doesn't uh, register on the laptop. Now, this may not be uh, a big issue to a lot of you, but for me, the way I type, I'm not the greatest typist. I'm probably the world's fastest three finger typist. Uh, but a lot of times when I hit keys, they tend to be closer towards the edges, not so much in the center. It did take me quite a while to sort of get used to it, but I still think this is something that Aftershock might want to look into. And yes, RGB, all right? Yes, you do get RGB, obviously, as you can see. Uh, you get full per key RGB illumination on the keyboard, which you can configure. And this is one of the presets. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera right now because I've got two really bright uh, studio lights shining on it. But it, when you use it for normal use, it's actually really, really bright. And of course, like I said, using the Control Center app, you actually get per key customization for uh, the RGB. And if you go under user mode, you can actually individually choose uh, which color you want for each key, or you can just use one of the many really, really cool presets. And now, of course, we talk about performance. And I have to say, this thing is crazy powerful, all right? First of all, I am honestly really shocked at how powerful laptop processors can actually get. Now, in my review of the Forge 15X, I said that it was a really good budget option for gamers as well as people who do content creation and color sensitive work. Now, this Ryzen 8 core CPU coupled with that RTX 3080 will basically chew up any 3D modeling or video rendering work and spit it out in no time. Now it actually got really uh, good scores on certain benchmarks as well, and I'll put them up on the screen. And even games as well, it doesn't matter what game you're playing, all right? This will run it really, really smoothly. Triple A titles, no issues, uh, even with that QHD resolution screen. Now in terms of price, if you get the very base pack of the Apex 15R, it comes in at about 2,765 Singapore dollars. But this particular spec, which is the upgraded recommended spec with the RTX 3080, comes in at about 4,084 Singapore dollars. Now that's definitely not cheap, but like I said, this is not a budget laptop. This is a true powerhouse and a desktop replacement unit, all right? Now, in true Aftershock fashion, all right, even at this price, it's still a couple of hundred or more uh, cheaper than other laptops or other brands with the similar spec. All right, so that about wraps up my review of the Aftershock Apex 15R. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do, and I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP, and I'll see you real soon.